if you want your system to continue working even if some parts are down and if you want your system to handle huge amount of requests there is only one style of communication that makes that possible i have extensively worked with distributed systems and in this video i'm going to show you what style of communication is best for resilient systems different ways to implement that style of communication and some technologies available for it this video is part of a 10 episode series on microservices communication but all the concepts discussed here are applicable to any distributed system let's take a video service that sends a request to the ip address of a running instance of the transcript service and waits for a response. This type of communication is called blocking synchronous communication. And there is a major downside to this type of communication. With this style of communication, when the video service sends a request to the transcript service, it has to wait for a response and it can't handle any other request until it gets a response back. But fortunately, there is another style of communication that you can use to get around this limitation. The video service could simply send a request to the transcript service and not wait for a response. This style of communication is called non-blocking asynchronous communication. With a non-blocking async communication, the video service can continue to handle incoming requests while the transcript service is processing its initial request. But it gets even better with non-blocking asynchronous communication. Let's say that it takes on average five minutes for the transcript service to process the request. In a blocking style of communication, if the video service calls directly the transcript service, it will be blocked for a few minutes. And what if there is a very long video and the processing time takes hours to complete? The video service will be blocked for hours. Clearly, synchronous communication doesn't really work in this case. And that's not all. If you want the video service to communicate not just with the transcript service, but also, let's say, with the notification service and the recommendation service, to start, you'll have to make a call to each service which is inefficient. And on top of that, if there is any request that is part of a call chain, each service in that chain will be blocked until the request reaches the end of the chain. As you can see, there are many scenarios for which synchronous communication is not ideal. But how does asynchronous communication solve that? A common solution is to communicate asynchronously via messages. With messaging, the video service sends a message to a channel and it moves on. And as far as the video service is concerned, that's the end of the story. Send a message, move on. Then the transcript service can read the message from the channel and it can process the message when it's ready. With this setup, even if the transcript service is down, the video service can continue to send messages to the channel. And when the transcript service is back up, it can read the messages from the channel and process them. And guess what? You've now implemented a resilient system. But it doesn't stop there. You can have multiple services reading from the same channel. And this is ideal if you want to broadcast an event to multiple services. The video service can send a message to a channel and the transcript service, the notification service and the recommendation service can all read from the same channel. That way of communicating by publishing an event can enable patterns like event-driven architecture and event sourcing. Messaging and overall asynchronous communication opens up a lot of possibilities. It allows for resilient and scalable systems. But in order to implement asynchronous communication via messaging, you have to set up channels and you need to make sure that messages are delivered and processed correctly. Not to mention that it can be much harder to reason about asynchronous communication. This adds a lot of complexity to your system. But thankfully, there are ways to make it easier to implement asynchronous communication. A very common solution is to use a message broker. So a message broker will act as an intermediary between the sender and the receiver. So you can use solutions like RabbitMQ, Apache Kafka, or Redis as message broker. In this case, the video service will send a message to the message broker, and the message broker will take care of delivering the message to the transcript service. A message broker can take care of a lot of things for you. For example, it can ensure that the message is delivered by retrying to deliver the messages that were not acknowledged by the receivers. Messaging using a message broker is an extremely popular solution, but that's not the only way to implement asynchronous communication. You can implement asynchronous communication via HTTP REST APIs. For example, the video service could send a request to the transcript service and the transcript service could respond with a simple acknowledgement. So the video service 
still needs to wait for the acknowledgement but the key point is that it doesn't need to wait for the processing. The processing of the video audio into text can happen in the background or even in the different thread than the one handling the request. Using synchronous communication is usually simpler and in most cases requires less infrastructure and tooling, but it creates coupling between services. With non-blocking asynchronous communication, coupling is reduced, services can still collaborate, but they are much more independent and the system overall is more resilient and scalable. For all of those reasons, even if it's more complex, it is nevertheless very common and very popular to use asynchronous communication in microservices architecture. But in this video, we only looked at unidirectional communication. So you can watch this next video to see how to implement bidirectional request response communication in an asynchronous way.